Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about bar charts, what they're good for, how we interpret them, and how we can use them, both in a business setting and with kids, to help them collect, graph, and analyze their own data using bar charts, to help them learn about themselves and the world around them. Let's start with a basic bar chart. The height of each bar visually represents a quantitative measure, a number. Each bar represents a category of some sort. For example, types of fruit or colors of crayons. Bar charts are easy for our eyes to analyze, and that's because the bars are aligned to a common baseline. This makes it extremely easy for us to pick out the biggest bar or the smallest one. It's also easy for our eyes to see the incremental difference between the bars. Because of their simplicity and ease of interpretation, I am a big fan of using bar charts and recommend using them regularly to communicate. Let's look at how these bars might be used in a specific scenario. Imagine you work for a regional grocery chain that has five stores. We'll call them A, B, C, D, and E. The chain has been having staffing issues across all of their stores. This bar chart shows the number of days each store has been understaffed in the past month. It's not unusual for a store to be occasionally understaffed. When this happens infrequently, those working can pick up the slack. But when it's more than that, the employees get tired of being stretched. This can lead to unhappy employees, which in turn can result in unhappy customers. While we've seen some staffing issues across all five stores, store B is certainly the most problematic. It has far more days understaffed than any of the other stores. In fact, they've been understaffed 27 out of the past 30 days. Given the size of this problem, I'd be inclined to suggest that we work to solve the staffing issues here first. Let's look at another scenario where we can use bars like this to better understand. Just like bars, these stacks of banana peels represent numbers too. Let's step back from the graph for a moment to learn about this situation. For that, I'll read the first few pages from my new book, Daphne Draws Data. Daphne was a dragon who loved to draw. She drew everything around her, trees and birds and mountains and rainbows. The more Daphne drew, the happier she felt. Daphne also enjoyed drawing something a little unusual, data. Data is information you can use to understand something better. Daphne liked to turn numbers, her favorite kind of data, into pictures called graphs to answer questions and help others. Data, shouted her older brother Declan when she showed him her latest masterpiece. Dragons don't do data. Dragons are fierce. Everyone is afraid of them. But Daphne didn't want to be scary. She wanted to be liked for being smart and kind. So she left her cave in search of a place where she could be herself. Daphne started in the jungle. Ooh, ooh, eek, eek, yelled a monkey as it climbed up a tree. I'm not dangerous, Daphne shouted back. Just because I'm a dragon doesn't mean I walk around breathing fire. The monkey popped out. Hi, I'm Daphne, the data drawing dragon. I'm traveling the world in search of friends to help. Suddenly, she was surrounded by monkeys. Someone's been eating all of our bananas, said one. Daphne looked around. Under each tree, there was a pile of banana peels. She counted them and wrote the numbers in her notebook. Then she drew the data. The question she wanted to answer was, where are the most banana peels? She drew a line for the x-axis, then drew each tree. There were a lot of peels on the ground. So rather than draw every single one, she made a key. One banana peel drawing would stand for five actual banana peels. There were five peels under the first tree. That's one banana peel drawing. The second tree had 30 peels underneath it. That's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 banana peels. Six banana peel drawings. Then she drew the rest. When Daphne's graph was complete, she used it to answer her question. Which tree has the most banana peels under it? Do you know? That's right, the second tree had the most banana peels. Aha, Daphne said, the culprit has been eating bananas from this tree. Everyone looked up. What did Daphne and the monkeys find in the problem tree? 
For the answer to that, I invite you to attend the virtual worldwide debut read aloud on Sunday, August 18th. I'll read the entire book, Daphne Draws Data, and answer viewer questions in this live fun for all ages session. Visit daphnedrawsdata.com slash read to register. And I'll just mention that we also have in-person read alouds scheduled this fall in Milwaukee and Seattle with more cities to be added. You can find all of that info plus a lot more at daphnedrawsdata.com. If you'd like to add Daphne Draws Data to your library, order it today. You can also sign up for a chance to win fun giveaways, join the upcoming in-person events, and find resources for kids, parents, and educators. Visit DaphneDrawsData.com. Thanks very much for tuning in.